We are going to talk about the Baltimore bridge collapse right now. Yesterday, midday for us in Australia, we got breaking news. And the breaking news was that a bridge in Baltimore had collapsed out of nowhere. And immediately I personally thought, oh, this must be because our infrastructure is dog, right? Turns out, no, it literally is one of those cases where it's a freak accident. Sometimes it happens. You know what I mean? Sometimes it happens. The only aspect of it that is like not so freakish or legitimately a much larger problem is the type of bridge that it is. The type of bridge that it is makes it so that when one part of it collapses, when a support beam collapses, it takes out the entire bridge, which makes it much more damaging. It is seemingly one of those situations that like literally is a freak accident, if that makes sense. Because like, obviously, when I look at that, I think, oh my God, our infrastructure is so bad. Our infrastructure is so bad. It got destroyed so easily. That's not even the case. There could have been accident mitigating infrastructure like bollards or columns to prevent the br uh, bridge collapsing. That's true. There are many different things that they could have done. Luckily, it happened at like late at night and luckily it didn't happen at rush hour because that would have killed so many more people. But ultimately, I think like people immediately thought maybe it's an act of terror. And then people were like, maybe it's not an act of terror, but like maybe it's actually because there is a black pilot or something, uh, you know, a black captain or DEI. And now conservatives are going off of the DEI angle. They're talking about how Baltimore's mayor is black. It's like, bro, have you seen Baltimore? Like, they're talking about it, like, as though it's just because Baltimore is like a predominantly black area that, like, you know, the bridge was... Sh I don't know what to say about this issue beyond the fact that, like, I told you that they just basically substituted, you know, the N-word, and then they substituted with CRT, and now they're substituting it with DEI. They just keep, like, swapping it, and it's just like, just say the N-word, dog. Like, I get it. Like, I know what you're trying to say. Conservatives have gotten lazy one they've gotten woke and they've gotten too pc because they just don't want to say the n-word right secondly they've gotten lazy because like dei crt all of that stuff is not just a substitute for the n-word it's a substitute for like the n-word variants of like whatever the race might be it's like a pick and choose for non-white okay non-white non-male so like they got so goddamn lazy that now they don't even like find the adequate, like they don't even do the research to be like, what kind of non-white person am I on? You know what I mean? They just say CRT. They just say DEI. They found like a universal placeholder that's politically correct. One, because they got woke. They're also gay and Marxist now. That's what happened to the conservatives. And secondly, they are lazy as Back in my day, racists would at least do their due diligence and find the appropriate slur to say to people. Nowadays, they don't even try. They just say woke. Where are the old school racists at? Dusting off the racism tomes, okay? Going in and like doing the reading to find out exactly what kind of bigotry we got to do. Yeah, this guy's like straight up Nazi, by the way. This account is like literally a Nazi. This is Baltimore's DEI mayor. DEI mayor in Baltimore? It's literally DEI if a white guy is in charge in Baltimore. You understand that, right? Like, it would literally be like a diversity initiative to put a white guy in charge of Baltimore. What the f are you saying? DEI. Like, they didn't put him there. They voted for him. Bro thinks they have a corporate structure in Baltimore, and they put this guy in charge because he's black. I just know one of the first conservative insane person posts we'll see in the morning about the bridge collapse incident will somehow be related to wokeness or DEI or insane bigotry. It's not even basically a matter of time, but our economy needs more foreign workers. Boom. What is happening? Like, do they think the bridge was built like by foreign workers last year or something? Like DEI is a relatively new phenomena. What the are we talking about? It just doesn't even make sense. That's what's frustrating about this situation is like, obviously it's racist, but I'm so used to that. I expect it. And that's like, it's lame. You're talking about a bridge that was built by your Italian dad. Yeah, they were the foreign workers at the time, dumb, but they're not the people that you now consider foreign workers. You know what I mean? Unless you are a racist who like has gotten an time machine and went back in time and you're like we got to cut out this italian immigration coming into the country like unless that's your argument for dei like what the f are you talking about the bridge is a huge part of the community here everyone's life is affected by this bridge also the workers weren't warned which is wild it's so f stupid not only is it f stupid but it also and i've explained this over and over again and i see this more so on twitter than anywhere else in a world full of blind people if you can actually have vision that's a l for you okay and Twitter is a world full of blind people. Every single one of these mother are dumb as hell. They're all stupid and they're all racist. For them, 
they're just in their hug box going, dude, we are so right. We are so right about our th this issue here. We're so right about this. Yeah, it is actually like, I'm sure the ship captain was black. I'm sure the people on the ship were like non-white. You know, I'm sure that that's why the power went out. I'm sure that the ship company is doing uh, hiring, diverse hiring practices. I'm sure the bridge was built by foreign workers and it didn't touch American hands. Let me tell you something. Back when we had manufacturing in the United States of America, everybody used to talk about how dog American manufacturing is. I mean, foreign workers. Like everyone used it. It was a it was a meta that like they would always joke that like people at the factories must not have worn helmets or whatever. The What's the Ford one? What's the meme about Ford? Found on the road dead. Thank you. Exactly. Ford found on the road dead. Ironically, as America has become more diverse, and this is a correlation, not causation, but like our car manufacturing has improved dramatically, which is pretty funny to think about. Back when we did do a lot of manufacturing in this country and there wasn't a lot of DEI or whatever the f like people knew how it was all the time. But it's hilarious to think about because like even on the correlation front, it actually doesn't make sense. Obviously, correlation is not causation, but like you don't even have a correlation here. Like more diversity is side by side with like better manufacturing capabilities. So it is very stupid. The bridge opened in 1977 and the acting governor at the time was a white guy. So I suppose you could say it's DEI. The government needs to hire less white people. I mean, it is DEI. For Baltimore, if you got a white boy in charge in Baltimore, that's DEI. That means like they did a diversity initiative, okay? It's the same as like Irvine. If you got a white guy in charge in Irvine, that's DEI, dog. What the f are you doing, you know? How did you get to this position, huh? Oh yeah, diversity application, right? That's what it is. Like, what are we talking about? DEI is a new acronym they love saying, but can't tell you what it stands for. It's CRT 2.0, yeah. White guy in Atlanta, DEI. We've just gotten progressively more and more insane as the years go by, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Americans have gotten so insane. It is the most predictable outcome of like living the way that we do for as long as we have. We've become an increasingly more violent culture. We have no solutions for any of the answers. So people are like desperate to find like good narratives. You know what I mean? So immediately people hit the terrorism note. People hit like, oh, it must be like gay black people building the bridge, a different form of bigotry. How does Pete excel so much on being the worst transportation secretary? It is pretty wild how many transportation related disasters have happened under one transportation secretary it's got to be karma you know what i mean any type of transportation that's going on in america is under pete buddha judge's watch it is really crazy it's just crazy because like so consistently there's one thorough line through all of these issues in all of these like transportation related issues right and it's not Pete Buttigieg. It is the fact that like every single one of these companies is constantly cutting corners, cutting costs, constantly profit seeking, constantly short term profit seeking in the sense that they literally do not care. Deregulation comes as well because they lobby the government for said deregulation. And then like they don't have the same they don't have enough security measures on the infrastructure side, on the government side. Then they also implement deregulation. And then like you have boats that run out of power and it's crazy that like you see this in every company it's not like black people running the ship it's not brown people running the ship it's that okay capitalism is running the mother ship and it's making all of these things worse and worse year over year over year and yet these dumb can't recognize that. So they have to look and point the finger at their pet project, which is unfortunately for many, just racism, unadulterated, unfiltered racism. That and a lack of safety redundancies. Yep. If it did have dolphins, uh, they were just very small and very far away from the piers. Effective. Yeah. Save money, save lives, install dolphins around your bridge piers. Now, the thing is, it can still be an issue. Freak accidents can still happen. And this is the unfortunate reality. Sometimes even if you have dolphins, even if you have the redundancies, it's not going to be 100% safe. Maybe a ship is coming at it way faster than you were supposed to. It's just like a perfect storm. You might have like uh, conditions that you might have like a rift and conditions that make it so that the ship is actually going faster than, uh, than it normally would. And it runs out of energy or whatever, the right? It runs out of power. And then it goes through the dolphin and still hits the 
bridge. I'm a civil engineer. The bridge was designed based on 1977 standards and ships have gotten bigger since then. This ship was 117,000 tons. Bridges then and now take impacts into consideration using fenders and around the piers, but nobody's going to agree to pay for the cost of reinforcement against the size of the ship. Point is, no matter what happens, like obviously you can still build the redundancies and they can still not be able to save you. In this circumstance, there were more safety measures that we could have had that we didn't. We did not have the safety measures on the infrastructure side. We also have increasingly, as a consequence of trying to make higher profits, we constantly front load all these goddamn ships. The logistics have gotten out of control. So these are all factors that contribute to these issues, okay? Here's the thing, okay? Every aspect of our lives is touched by capitalism. Every aspect of our lives is impacted by decision makers that cut corners, deregulate, and make the process of your product coming from point A to point B to your door less safe for everyone involved because they're trying to make it as efficient as possible and they're trying to ensure profits are as high as possible. You can point to the system for every single problem. Beyond that, does happen sometimes so i do think that this is like one of those instances right like obviously we like looking at like what could have happened if we had like proper safety measures yada 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 and that's important because those safety measures exist for this reason sometimes it is a freak accident reasons why the bridge collapsed stone toss the nazi says foreign workers bridge was built in 1977 i don't think that he knows who he is talking about when he says foreign workers because this is of course a puerto rican latino nazi by the name of hans graber making this take he would probably be considered a foreign worker by the metrics of his own you know his own ideological uh uh not skin folk so that's cool. This guy says Chinese contractor ship. We're talking about global shipping. Like, do you know what you are talking about? Point the finger of blame at China for everything then, because guess what? But make no mistake, he's racist, but sometimes he could have actually technically called it right. We're talking about global shipping. Of course, hella global shipping is like completely controlled by uh, Chinese companies. I do like that we are now making the whole like meme that I breath life in, breathed, breathed? What kind of Chinese are you is now a reality, okay? This is like very real. Senator, the ship was Singaporean. Yes, yeah, Singaporean is a different kind of Chinese is basically now what is happening, okay? I'm not giving this guy any like props here. I don't think he, you know, I don't think he like thought about it too much. He just immediately was like, it must be Chinese. Baltimore Bridge is 1.6 miles long. This is the moment it collapsed after a cargo ship struck it early in the hours of this morning. Lockdown. Yeah, you, you know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. The bridge had a vaccine injury? Like, what's, what's happening? John Guandolo says, my initial assessment of the bridge collapse due to the main support column being struck by a ship in Baltimore is that it is more likely than not intentional. Several Al-Qaeda Hamas cases while in the FBI and since and found verified by state intel agencies, Al-Qaeda and Hamas targeted key bridges to shut down exfil abilities so they could conduct significant level follow on attacks. This may be that, or this may be an accident. I lean strongly towards not an accident. The, the fact that FBI slash Department of Homeland Security says it is not terrorism is a key indicator that it is. FBI slash Department of Homeland Security have been wrong 100% of the time. They initially say it's not terrorism. Fort Hood, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Lakewood, Texas. This guy, wait, did this guy work for the FBI for real? Isn't it weird that it happened after the Moscow attack? Because the Moscow attack is an act of terror. Like a deliberate act of terrorism is not. What the f are we talking about sometimes things do happen and it's not immediately like a part of a grand scheme unless the grand narrative that we're talking about is literally capitalism and its inclination towards deregulation and constant profit seeking initiatives that basically make it less safe for transportation for logistics and make our key infrastructures also less safe as well not ready for how large how big our cargo ships are nowadays you know what i mean as far as like grand narratives goes like sometimes 
happens. Sometimes a car accident occurs. You can look at it seriously. You can look at it and analyze it from the framework of like, well, maybe we should have less car reliant infrastructure. Maybe we should have better restrictions. Maybe we should try and ensure that there are less fatal incidents occurring on the road, right? But we're not doing that because, you know, we're, we're too busy making profits or whatever. People look at something as like normal as like a car accident nowadays and go, oh, it must be that the driver was like black. You know what I mean? This course is driven by the most mentally ill. It is not driven by ideology. No, no, this is ideology. This kind of mental illness is a manifestation of ideology for sure. This kind of mental illness only happens with ideology. Part of this is anti-materialist thinking. Part of this comes from not being able to accurately look at the situation and recognize the structures that we exist under and why things are happening in the way that they're happening. This is a very predictable outcome if you are, like, not directly this, uh, you know, Baltimore Bridge is going to blow up or whatever, but it's a relatively predictable outcome. Our infrastructure is pretty bad. It doesn't have the adequate safety measures in place. And like, you know, things like this are probably going to happen. You're probably going to see, and this is not going to be an act of terror, but you're probably going to see more bridges collapsing in the United States of America in the next five to 10 years. Is it because I can see the future? Do, am I clairvoyant? No, I'm not clairvoyant. I just know that we have a lot of F graded eroding infrastructure that a ton of very heavy increasingly more heavy trucks are passing over our infrastructure is crumbling we know that it's bad we are basically resting on the laurels of the new deal and it's all that we built in like the 1930s right and we barely have upgraded this stuff there are ratings on this stuff like there there's a way to like go through and look at the safety measures and see if it's adequate and america consistently is considered inadequate and getting worse and worse so it is not that crazy of a stretch or that wild of a take to suspect that like we will see more bridge collapses in the future this is maritime version of that bridge collapse not having enough safety boundaries in place to withstand larger impact from bigger cargo ships consistently filling our cargo ships up to the brim the logistics companies not listening to safety concerns that are coming from within refusing to reckon with that because that's unfortunately too costly and ultimately you arrive at this powder keg this perfect chaotic situation why do we have such conspiratorial thinking i said it's ideology right people don't want to think about that grand design that's complicated that's not like fun it's not easy to understand it's much easier to be like oh jews did this it's much easier to be like oh hamas did this they must have done this it's way simpler to think in black and white terms and think that there are just like purely evil people that want to do evil they want to do bad things and they want to do bad things to us because we're good and they're jealous of our goodness that is basically at the heart of liberalism which everyone is almost every single person you know in this liberal monoculture to some degree shaped by liberalism and their understanding of the world and liberalism demands black and white thinking good and bad some people are good some people are bad it, it is not like a completely uh, a, a product of their social conditioning but instead because they're just like inherently good or inherently evil so then that is how you arrive at this like fascist ideological conspiratorial thinking because you're like well who's the most evil right now hamas duh or who's the most evil right now jews so then they come up with these grand narrative who's the most evil right now china by way of the singaporean chinese and that is why these guys arrive at these insane conclusions and i mean it's fun to watch it's hilarious right it's a it's a choose your own adventure but it is kind of scary that american politics is a collection of the most unimaginably mentally ill takes now like very very little reasonable discourse occurs it's almost always just like nah it's got to be some other uh you know it's got to be some crazy conspiracy here's a site tracking how U.S. bridges are over 45,000 are considered structurally deficient. One in three U.S. bridges needs a repair or replacement. In the state rankings, in a percentage of structurally deficient bridges, West Virginia is the number one state. Iowa, number two. South Dakota, number three. Rhode Island, number four. Maine, number five. Pennsylvania, number six. Puerto Rico, number seven. This issue that we're talking about right here is the same problem, a different variant of the same problem. It comes from the same place. It's a different variant of it, though, because you're going to be like, oh, Hassan, what do you mean? These are like, these bridges are in a state of disrepair. The Baltimore Bridge was fine. Uh, the Baltimore Bridge wasn't in a, in, a, in a bad condition or in a state of disrepair. And it's like, 
No, the Baltimore Bridge did not have adequate safety measures placed for uh, the, the consistent ships that were going through it. That much is obvious. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. I uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we- Yeah, it's like, it's definitely this guy who wasn't even alive when the bridge was built, who is responsible for this, um, for the for the disaster. Seeing an abject tragedy with an as yet unexplained cause, how can I make this racist? If the Titanic cry- <gasps> Oh my God, Juniper said the same joke that I've been making. I literally said this exact same joke. I was like, bro, I said the exact same joke about the Titanic. I was like, DEI, man. That's why it happened. Twitter used to be a place to go for breaking news about things like the Baltimore Bridge disaster. Under Elon Musk, it has become the place to go for brand new unhinged conspiracy theories about how diversity made a bridge collapse. Did you already see this? Is literally just black equals bad? Let's meet the commissioners for the Port of Baltimore, starting with Karen uh, Carinthia, a barber. She knows nothing about ports, but she's a diversity, equity, and inclusion belonging auditor and consultant. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm losing my mine diversity equity and inclusion initiatives are oftentimes simply just marketing it is to make the company look more presentable and more marketable if you think that this has a tangible impact on the actual direction of society or the actual direction of the company at all in a meaningful capacity you are either a a liberal who looks at that and goes "Ooh, this is sick or b a dumbass racist it all comes down to do you think black people have the capacity to work in positions of power or do you think they are inferior beings that's literally it liberals look at that and go no that's great it's awesome wonderful they are right to say it's awesome it's wonderful there's black people in in positions of power that's great conservatives look at that and go no dog i'm a racist that i think that that is fucked up we should be grateful for this opportunity to put the test to Elon's argument that DEI is bad by reading all the evidence in Twitter replies. Yeah, exactly. Elon was so right, dude. The evidence has been presented by this guy who also seems to think that, I guess he is not a Holocaust denier, but more so like he said the Holocaust is good and that uh, we fought the wrong guys. You know, he's just an out and about, oh, six million e gorillion. Wonderful. He literally is hitting both of those notes. He's saying the Holocaust didn't happen. But if it did, it was good, and we should have done more of it, actually. And we, as America, fought the wrong guys. Yeah, classic. My favorite type of Nazi. The guy who says the Holocaust didn't happen, but if it did happen, we should do more of it, and it was good. Ryan Grimm, let me preface this by declaring my total ignorance about what specifically is going on on right-wing Twitter. No idea the proximal trigger for the latest meltdown. But I do have one general observation. You drove all the libs off of Twitter and rejoiced. For now, there were no libs. You welcome back the Pepe frogs and rejoice. For now, there were bountiful frogs. Yet the next morning you wept, for there were no liberals to own. Alas, for you had recreated Truth Social, but with more bots. And so there was nothing left to do but call each other pedos and cancel each other. That's my guess. Yeah, he's not wrong. There is some truth to this. I think there is some very real truth to this. I mean, dude, I am a Twitter power user. I'm literally one of the most Twitter using people out there. I used it for my job. I still use it for my job. And I took it off my phone because it became unbearable to see the metric ton of unfiltered stupidity and racism that was being elevated as though it was the greatest take of all time. I don't want to see it. It's like mainlining 4chan, 8chan, and like Kiwi Farms together. It just sucks.